when we look at the solar system, we see a number of different objects. And here we have 10 objects, including the Sun. And we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And sometimes people will lump these all as planets. Sometimes they'll say only the first eight are planets. Uh, but regardless of what they're called, we can see that they are all a bit different from each other. Uh, and they all have different properties. But what when we list off all these properties, what we will find actually is that they fall neatly into a couple of different groups. And this helps us understand how the solar system formed. It also helps talk about, conveniently, about the different types of, uh, of objects when we, can, when we can name them. So what I've done here, I have all these objects, and I have uh, uh, different properties on the left-hand side, and a box for each of the, each of the planets. And let me just uh, put a label on these. This will be for this one will be for Mercury. This will be for Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Um, so first of all, let's look at size. We look at these and we notice, hey, these are really small. These first four are small. So I'm going to put S. I'm going to put S for for small. Um, yeah. So we go S for small. Venus is small. Earth is small. Mars is small. Jupiter is big. So is Saturn. So is you know Uranus and Neptune. They're much bigger than than the Earth. And Pluto's out oh, here, and he's kind of small. When we determine their mass and then compared to their volume, we can look at their density. And, and different materials have different densities. So, so higher density things are, are, are rocky. Uh, lower density things are gaseous or, or liquid. And when we look at uh, the density of these different, uh, these different planets, compared to water, Mercury, Venus, and Earth are you know, about the same uh, average density relative to water, about five times that of water. So five five times that of water. Mars is a little bit less, more like four times. Jupiter is more like um, about one times, a little bit, a little bit more, maybe uh, what's this called? About one times that of water. Um, Uranus is about you know, about 0.7 times that of water. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all are about one, a little bit more than one. Uh, so but just as I say, one one times. And the same thing with for 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 Pluto. It's a, you know a little bit a little bit more. Pluto's edging towards two actually. I'll put so I'll put two times for for Pluto. Um, so what we have here is these first four. Are clearly made up of something different than these four, um, and which and all the other differences among those. Pluto is made up of something different in, in, in entirely. So then, moons. Um, if we look at Mercury, Mercury has zero moons. Venus has zero moons. We have one. Mars has two. Jupiter, last time I checked, had about sixty-three. Saturn has 62, Uranus has 27, Neptune has about 13, and Pluto has 3. So if we were to group these, we would pretty much say the first four have very few moons, and then we have these monsters that have many, many moons, and then there's Pluto, which has kind of a medium number. If we look at rings, although they don't show up in this picture, I mean, Saturn is the only planet that has a substantial ring. But Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have rings. So uh, Mercury, no. Venus, no. No for Earth, no for Mars. Jupiter, yes. Saturn, definitely. And Uranus and Neptune all have all have uh, uh, rings, although they're very slight. It actually took a long time to actually even see them. They're very thin, but th those four definitely have have rings. And then Pluto does not. All right, so.
when we finally come down to look at it, what we notice is the following. If we were to group these objects together as kind of in as many kind of few groups as possible, logically it, it seems that what we would want is essentially the following. We would have the first four, which are rocky, they're small, rocky, few moons, and no rings. Then we would have the next four. And those are are large. They're gaseous. They're they're not. They don't have rocky surfaces. They have many moons and they have rings. And then all by itself, we have Pluto in the end of a class by itself. The reason why astronomers decided to rewrite the definition of a planet is 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 because of this grouping i mean if you really want to kind of group things together it makes sense to call we have the rocky planets also called the terrestrial planets we have the gas giants um, here the gas planets and and then pluto is more like a rocky snowball and it doesn't really fit in this grouping much at all and so it makes more sense to kind of clump it in with a bunch of other objects that are past Pluto and around this this well past called the Kuiper Belt objects which are all of similar uh, um, properties of Pluto and historically had Pluto been discovered along with the Kuiper Belt objects uh, they would have clearly been grouped with them and it was just a historical fluke that Pluto was discovered sooner than that and was lumped in with the various with the various planets